Agency Click presents Everything Film with Film Robot from Brew Hall on 2nd Avenue and Quebec, broadcasting on BNN Bloomberg Radio, also 103.5 FM HD3. Joe Leary along with Patrick Shelton from Film Robot and uh, my longtime buddy, Mr. Adam H. Hello! Nice to be on the show. But this kid here, this guy here, just growing up for a very nice chance, Hurstfield. Um, I've known you for a number of years. It's been a little it's, bit. It's, How have you been? It's been a while since I've seen you. It's been a, it's been a while, but I've seen you a lot because you're just one of the busiest acting guys in your age range. I mean, you are killing it, my friend. I've been very lucky for the past couple of months. I was lucky enough recently to do a movie called Fat Man at the beginning of this year with Mel Gibson. With which Mel was... Gibson. And how did, how did you find the Mel Gibson experience? It was... Okay, Prior to meeting him, I was very nervous because yeah. I, I You had thought, read some stuff or you had I, heard some stuff. Well, no, I was nervous because I thought he wasn't going to like me. You okay. know, he's a legend. He's a two-time Academy Award winner. So I was nervous about oh saying goodness. something wrong or making a joke or if he doesn't laugh or if he just doesn't like me in general. But I met him and he was super sweet. He was super kind. He was down to earth and he was spitting out jokes left and right. He was making the whole lunchroom laugh. And, you know... To work with him, he's a two-time Academy Award winner, so in the scenes, he's bringing the emotion and the power and the conviction, and when I was around him, I was like a sponge, trying to soak up as much information as I could and learn as much as I could from him. See what a dynamic this kid has got? This, oh, is, why, this is why he's as busy as he is. <laughs> Where did that come from? Did that come from the old man? Did uh, you chip off the old block there? Or? He's um, he's definitely, definitely helped me and yeah. taught me some things. Well, you know what? It's interesting because I always look at guys that do it. You enjoy it, right? And I, mean, I do. You know, what do you say to people that say, oh, my parents got me into this and everything and oh. I mean, you hear those horror stories yeah, about, yeah, right? you know, child actors becoming crazy as they grow up. But I have a feeling that's <laughs> probably because they didn't really want it. It was their parents forcing them right, into it. And right. then it just. What's your experience with that? I mean, I love acting. I, I've been doing it for 10 years now. Yeah. I love everything about it. I love being on set. I love getting to formulate and create characters. I love meeting new people. And the food on set. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's just a different level. You know, I feel like food on set in general is just 10 times better than food. So what about, what about when you go into like your trailer, right? Like you obviously one of those guys to you get your name on the trailer you and know, you walk in and then you're like by yourself and no one's in the trailer with you. How boring is that? I mean, here's the here's the crazy thing. You know, there's <laughs> definitely some shows, movies have big trailer budgets, but actors don't spend a lot of time in the trailer. Yeah, you don't want to be I there. I mean, <laughs> now because of COVID, we spend more time oh, in the trailer. Awesome. That's but awesome. beforehand, it was just so go to the trailer, get so ready, that's it. Chance, you're still a well grounded, down to earth guy, but are you being golf carted to set? Do you hold your own umbrella? Are you that guy? I I like to hold my own <laughs> umbrella. <laughs> that's that's one thing I find crazy. I you know on people on set, there's people who hold the umbrella for you, but I yeah. I don't. I feel like I can hold my own umbrella. I think I have my arms for a reason, but. So season three of A Million Little Things. Uh, you must be so proud of that. And Adam, you, I know how proud you are because I see you gushing about Chance on social media all the time. Absolutely. Well, Chance is my baby. Yeah. I mean, you know, he's been my he's been my number one since before he was born. And just to see him grow into this little man that he's becoming... That makes me the most proud. Well, not to mention if he keeps booking the roles he's booking, he's going to be your retirement policy, too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, That's awesome. You, you are so, now, we were talking earlier about, you. Know, what was the uh, hedge, Sonic the Hedgehog? You you do voice acting for animated features I as do. well. Is that a different style of thing? Do you prefer reading a script in a dramatic role? Do you like being a badass kid? Or do you like just sort of not being seen and just playing a character? You know what? Animation and live action are definitely very different. I love both of them. You know, animation is a completely different world. You could show up to the studio in your pajamas yeah. for all they care. But, I mean, if I were to pick one or the other, I do like live action just because I like to be in the scene. I like to act it out. I like to go through the actions of it. But nevertheless, I mean... Animation is still a wonderful experience. I remember having a dinner with Adam and Chance. Remember back in the old days when you could get together for dinner and stuff? Oh, gosh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, Vaguely. Uh, and there were some words in the script that were kind of not cool for a... You were a younger guy at this point. <laughs> yeah. But it was kind of like, well, it's on the page, Chance. That's kind of what you got to say. It's kind of fun to sometimes have that ability to get away with stuff, huh? 
<laughs> you know what? It, it really is. I feel like as a child actor, you mature a lot faster just because you learn a lot of things from scripts, whether it's useful information at a young age or things that will scar you for life. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I would be as if I didn't ask you, and I have to ask you about, and my wife's a big fan of a million little things, and I have to ask you, and I'll be honest, I haven't watched it that much. I've watched a few episodes, but I got to ask you, like, describe your character or like what what the mood is that you play. Well, see, Danny Dixon, I I love playing a variety of characters, which is why I was lucky enough to do Fat Man at the same time as I was doing A Million Little Things. Because on Fat Man, I play Billy Weenan, who's a despicable child who hires a hitman to go after Santa Claus. He likes being We've all been there. I'm evil. Sure. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> he likes being evil to everyone around him. He loves one person, and that same person is the only person that loves him, his grandmother. But then I also got to balance out playing Danny on A Million Little Things, who's a kind-hearted kid, big heart, wears his heart on his sleeve. He loves everyone around him. He's super lovable, so everyone around him loves him. And meanwhile, he's, he's battling with his sexuality. So I was extremely fortunate to be able to play both characters at the same oh, time wow. and balance So them are out. your parents like the main characters or like the parents are like The storyline is in the first episode uh it is about a man named John Dixon who commits suicide. Right. So right. it's about how cuz he was the most put together of the friend group so it's okay, about how I everyone see, comes see. together and their adventures after that. Oh, fantastic. And I fantastic. play I play John and, and this was the guy from Office Space. Yeah, yeah. Ron Livingston. Were you a fan of Office Space? Um I was. I thought it was a very funny movie yeah. um to meet him and work with him. I mean, I've been fortunate enough to work with so many amazing actors and Ron being one of them, he's just a fantastic guy overall. I remember ha having a conversation with your dad, Adam, uh, and you had said, I can't tell you what it is, Joe, but it's big. This kid just books up. It's big. It is big. And three years in, I mean, you never know the future of Hollywood. How has COVID affected uh, what you do? I mean, on A Million Little Things in particular, there's definitely a lot of new protocols on set to ensure the safety of everyone. I mean, we're tested two times a week. So they're very with the, careful. With the thing up the nose? Yeah, but it doesn't go oh, that far. That they, they have okay. a new technology. Okay, it only goes I, a couple centimeters okay. in, so I've it's heard, not I've heard that bad. bad. About that. Okay. But um, yeah, there's a lot of new protocols. We're spending a lot more time in the trailers now because we can't mm -hmm. eat lunch mm -hmm. together. But the weirdest thing about it is, on a million little things, you know, we got very lucky with the cast. Usually there's one person who's not as close with everyone else in an ensemble cast, but with a million little things, we're like one big family. It was yeah. kind of like an instant connection. So we don't see each other as an ensemble cast. We see each other as a family. So to not be able to see each other for almost a year and then being like, hey, I know you're like a brother to me. I know you're like a sister to me and I haven't seen you in like a year, but I'm still gonna maintain my distance and elbow you because that's all I can really do. It's a little bit strange, but you know, I get it. They have to make sure everyone is safe. You know what I think is so fortunate because I've known I've known Chance for for a few years now, and I've really seen the I, I see the the, the the kindness and, and the the heart that you compassion that you show on social media. He's a really really decent human being, and the, a lot of times when you start in an industry so young, like unlike any other industry, but you know you start off, start off as that kid actor. But good luck as you age. I, I see you just getting better and better because, first of all, you do a million little things when you think about it. You're, you're, you're sort of spreading yourself as far as you possibly can. But I don't see you ever being in that situation where it's like, yeah, no, let's find a younger kid. That uh, nah, chance is getting too old. I think you're going to morph into a, a brilliant young man. I appreciate that. Thank yeah. you very much. I mean, on a million little things. I'm very lucky to work on it, not only because it's a wonderful show with wonderful writers, but our cast. I mean, I learned so much from them every day. James Roday, who plays Gary, he's like a mentor to me. Wow. He, on A Million Little Things, we do so many different takes per angle, and he'll manage to keep it fresh and change his delivery every single take. And when it's your coverage, when the camera's on you, he'll completely flip his line even to get you an authentic reaction and a real reaction. So to work with the entire cast and people like James Roday, it's a blessing because I get to learn so much from them. So, uh, how old a man are you now, Chance? I'm 14 right Four, now. 14 years old. What, what do you foresee? What is where is 24 year old Chance? Is he? Are you a director? At the, or do you want to get into that side of the thing, or what? I definitely would like to continue being an actor at the age of 24. That yeah. would be fantastic. But maybe, you know, maybe as I get older, I could 
try directing something or, or writing. I'm not sure, but that would be definitely very cool. Do you ever, something I want to try. Do you, and you don't need to reveal any names. I'm not trying, but I'm just curious. Do you ever on set, because I mean, you're now pretty experienced at what you do. Do you ever sort of hear someone else's delivery and think, mm, nah, that's not how I would have done it. But. No, actually, <laughs> don't I criticize. Mean, not at all. <laughs> I've been very fortunate, as yeah. I said, to work with so many amazing actors. So when I hear them say it, I hear, Okay, I heard it differently in my yeah. mind, but that is so much better than what I thought. Right. And, well, you know, on that note, I'm going to ask you, because we are sitting here and, you know, with Agency Click Film Robot, the people that are listening to this show on the radio and everything, I, I have to ask you, because what do you say to somebody that's like you, that's gone through some failures, they've got an agent, they're starting out, and, you know, they went at three auditions and one, two, three, they got denied. You know, it wasn't... and. You know, you would, you've never been denied, obviously, but, uh, but obviously, no, right? No is the biggest word you're going to hear in this industry. Yes, right? That's the thing. Don't get upset based off of a no. What my dad did when I was young is there was a period of two years where I wasn't really booking anything, and I was getting put on hold, and I was getting very close. But we would celebrate the close calls because the thing is, it's not that they don't want you for that role. You were still put on hold, and you're now on their radar. So, so they what's could, that advice? What's that advice? They could, I want to go on that vein with you. Like, just... Like, two years. Go well, off of that. You know, don't get upset at the no's, because no is the biggest word you're going to hear in this industry. But the thing is, if you're getting these close calls, now they know who you are. So they could have a different character for a different project and be like, oh, I remember that kid from this audition. You know, he might be a really good fit for this character. Let's bring him in. So celebrate the close calls and don't get upset over no, because everyone hears no's. So do you think that happened to you? Do you think a close call oh, yeah. led you oh, yeah, to like, what you're doing now? I mean, it... I, yeah, actually very much so. I haven't got a lot of those in that period of time. I would always get put on hold and I'd always get almost right there, but it would either be I was too new or because I was so young, I yeah, couldn't yeah, yeah. work enough it, hours. It, the thing to remember is that no doesn't mean never. No might just mean not now not right or, now, not, or for not for this. this. Yeah, you're very right. But you are a testament to uh, perseverance, and I'm so happy to know you, man, because I I celebrate your uh, your, your goodness as well, because you're really killing it, and I could only imagine where this career is going to go. Dad, you seem to have kept him grounded, and I think that's so important because even as Chance said himself, you know, you can you can lose your mind really easy when everybody is like you know adoring you and giving you this and giving you that, but you've got a real uh, a real good one here. Well, you know. Uh, the one rule we have always, we've always had since Chance was young on set is if he wants a snack or if he wants a drink, he can walk to craft services and get it himself. Because yeah. we have assistants that, you know, hey, can I bring you this? Can I bring you that? And, you know, I always want Chance to know, don't believe the hype. Enjoy the moment. Enjoy the ride. Absolutely. But, Good for you, you know. Appreciate the way up and be nice to everybody on the way up because they're the same people yeah. you pass on the way down. <laughs> well, the like the biggest time. decision you got is that you know that when you go to the Oscars, you only get one guest. <laughs> yeah. I know you. I know you thought about this, <laughs> so you got to think about those people in your life, and you know who looks good in a tuxedo. <laughs> yeah. you, know, you know, I'm just, I'm just saying. We should, we should, we we long for those days to get back, and I think in 2021, you know, by yeah, we will, we will, we, we should be Hopefully. back. Um, he, he, he was nominated for a, a couple awards this year. And, and he actually won an award for a million. Can you share that with us? What, what was that award? Um, I won the Leo. No, yeah. he, oh yeah, you won a Leo. Leo he won a Joey award, award and he was also nominated for a UBCP UBC Actor UBC. Award. Oh, that's yeah. and he was the only kid nominated in the whole award show, which oh, is really cool. UBC well, you're you're, you're, uh, you're gonna have to make room. You're knocking Daddy's gold record. <laughs> <after all. laughs> it's true. Yeah, it's uh, true. Adam H, always a pleasure to see you, my friend. Uh, Chance, listen, best of the holiday season to you guys, and continue to kill it in 2021. Thank you guys so much. Cheers. Thank you for having us. Thank Cheers. you for having us.